Hello everyone, if you followed my channel for a while, you know that this project has been in the works for a real long time. But finally, today we're going to take a look at uh, uh, ADX R345 MCU I created. It's a STM32 F103 base chip and uh, you mount an ADX R345 extra motor on top, just like here. The reason it's a separate module there is because it, uh, JLC PCB doesn't have the ADX R345 in stock. And uh, plus, the module itself is actually cheaper than the chip as well, and this works. I don't see a reason why it wouldn't, so I didn't bother, and uh, yeah, it is finally connected. There were some problems with the configuration of this, but uh, yeah, I'll get to that in a separate video. So, uh, this is just me getting this working today. This is uh, actually being recorded on the day that I am going to upload this, so uh, yeah, I can't do much more, but... There will be a few more videos about this, one of them will take a look at the ADX L345 MCU that I designed and it will just uh, consist of a guide of using that and uh, also ordering information etc, that sort of stuff. That will come after this uh, sensor is thoroughly tested. Another video to come will be the comparison that I promised between the Voron 2 and the Voron 0. But uh, yeah, my Voron 0 is in pieces at the moment so that will also take a while. The quickest video will probably be uh, me comparing the before and after, after I do the ADX L345 tuning on this uh, Voron 2 but uh, yeah the first video which is today's video will just be a quick look at this and uh, kind of like a teaser for upcoming content because uh, yeah that's all I can do today for now so uh, yeah hope you're excited so let's get this thing uh, running and let's get some data out of it. You can see that the sensor is working now and you can see the movement on the x-axis because this is the x-axis test. So this is how it works. It moves the gantry of the selected axis. Again, this, this is x-axis uh, back and forth at an increasing frequency. And while doing so, it gets some accelerometer readings. And using that data, you can uh, either ask it to recommend you an input shaper or choose your own. And uh, uh, yeah, that's the way the test works. You can't really see this uh, with your naked eye even in real life, so this is a slow motion recording slowed down to, uh, I think it's 25%, but it might slightly change when I'm editing based on how long I talk here. But uh, yeah, this is the way it works. You also do this for the y-axis, it spits out some data, and then you can do some calculations, either offline on your computer or you can do it on the Raspberry Pi as well. I asked it to do on the Raspberry Pi and then it comes up with a chart and uh, f tests a few input shapers and uh, recommends one of them and uh, yeah we will get all to all of that. There is also the option of doing this automatically so you just run a command through the terminal and then say save config when you are done and it just applies the, uh, the, rec the same recommendation that you would get if you do the calculation the other way. And uh, after that you are also supposed to retune your pressure advance etc. But for all of that I'm going to make a separate video, a uh, resonance testing and calibration video. And uh, yeah, you, you, you can use that as a guide if you wish. But uh, as I said, today I'm just testing the MCU and the sensor and all of that type of content will come out later. But uh, yeah, I guess let's take a look at the data it came up with. Again, this is not really taken under ideal circumstances. A few things are loose, for example, and most importantly, I've noticed one of the screws that's holding the tool head board on the, uh, behind the extruder motor is uh, kind of loose, so I'm going to uh, screw it back together with some thread locker this time. So, there are things like that. The panels are off for the deck panel, etc. And I think I could do a better job of getting rid of the drag from the USB cable for the ADX L345 MCU I designed. And uh, yeah, there are things like that. So uh, yeah, this is not ideal, but this should give you an idea of what to expect. So uh, this is the x-axis measurements, the red line that is. The purple solid line behind that is X, Y, and Z combined. And uh, yeah, you can see that there is slightly higher, but not by much and that's because the movement was on the x-axis so the vibrations should be on the x-axis so uh, yeah that's the reason but uh, if this is really off that means there's something wrong mechanically there so it's good that it's measuring all three axes the sensor is spitting out all of that anyway so uh, it's a nice thing to see in this chart but on the top right here you can see the input shape per algorithms that are tested 
and uh, you can see that it's recommending the tree hump EI whatever that stands for uh, algorithm you can see that uh, what they do here so this is the CV one for example and the rest of them the tree hump one has three humps for example and uh, yeah it tests them and you get this uh, light blue line here after shaper so after the input shaper that is this tree hump this is the resonances the, this, this is the resonance it expects so uh, yeah that's the way this works uh, there's also the uh, frequency for those uh, algorithms so uh, yeah you need to enter that as well when you do the changes to your printer.cfg or if you're doing it automatically it will save that and this is the measurement for Y again the same idea here but uh, yeah it's you can see that it's quite a bit different and you can see that this spike is really high I'm assuming that's because of the slightly do screw on the uh, board there but I don't know for sure but uh, again it recommends the tree hump algorithm here as well but at 50 Hertz instead of 80 point or 84.6 Hertz here so uh, yeah it's going to come up with different results you don't do this testing for the Z so uh, yeah that's all it is just X and Y uh, as I said that's all I'm going to do in this video but the fact that I got this working means that uh, there will be quite a few videos coming out over the next like a month or two probably two as I said I'm going to do the comparison video on the V2 before after and you also need to do uh, pressure advanced tuning so before after and after again in progress I don't know whatever you call that so it will have three prints I will probably do a guide about uh, using input shaper and uh, yeah I will probably cover the regular wiring of the ADXL345 in that video and probably uh, hint at the, my MCU option as well there will be a video about the MCU once it is tested a bit more and I'm going to release the Gerber files etc for it once everything is tested and uh, there will also be the video showing the difference in data between the Voron 2 and the Voron 0 the Voron 0 you don't really get many resonance marks so it's going to be a lot more stable than this but uh, yeah it should give you an idea of uh, the effect the size of the printer has so uh, it could still be interesting but uh, yeah for now as I said that's it for this video so uh, I hope you're excited for that and I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, if you did please leave me a like down below and thanks for watching